Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be rebuilding a hydraulic cylinder, specifically a steering cylinder, and uh, looking at some of the tips and tricks I have for you and uh, doing a job like this. Alright, so here we have an electric Yale forklift. Um, I'm helping out in the shop today. This got brought in for uh, a bunch of repairs, but specifically today we're going to be touching on the steering cylinder. So look down in here, you can kind of see it's all grimy and gooey. And uh, we're going to get this pulled out and uh, go over some uh, proper techniques as far as uh, rebuilding these steer cylinders. And as I lift this up, you'll kind of notice in the front there, don't forget your wheel chocks, folks. Bad things happen in a hurry. Alright, here we're getting started. Now we're on the back side of that steer axle, uh, looking up at the hydraulic lines that control the steering. Um, and uh, what you want to do is break those lines off and uh, have a pan ready. There usually is a little bit of fluid uh, left over in the cylinder or in the lines. And right here I'm taking the cap off of the end of the wheel and this will expose the spindle nut that holds the bearings in place and part of the reason why we are going to take the uh, wheel off is the tie rod nut basically sits slightly underneath the tire so we'll have to get the tie rod ends taken loose so that way when we drop the cylinder out uh, there's enough movement or articulation to get it out. And here's your tie rod nut and kind of a half-assed uh, spring clip that's left over. Last person that did it. I guess it works, kind of. So here's our first little tip for taking these out. Uh, you can use a uh, like ball joint separator. Um, most of these aren't that tight, so I take the nut off, flip it upside down so I have the more solid part of the nut. Screw it all the way down so all the threads are engaged on the uh, nut. That way you don't deform anything. And just give her a little smack on top and she'll pop right out as you're about to find out. And here's our next little tip. Um, cotter keys uh, sometimes can be hard to pull out because the tails are deformed on them. So if you take your diagonal cutters, dikes, side cutters, whatever you want to call them, and use them almost like a prying action, you'll see that I grip low in the front and use the tips as the prying section. Uh, it will actually pull the tails out and form them or extrude them back to the hole. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this one, uh, double wrenching to get extra leverage uh, when you don't have a lot of space. And on this unit, I have to have all the space I can get so the boss fittings come out in order for me to slip the steer cylinder out of here. Hello. Uh, 
And I know how you guys like a close-up, so here's the uh, close-up of taking the snap ring off with the appropriately named tool. Snap on, snap off. Get in there all nice and deep like boy. So here's my snap ring pliers. These are uh, both internal and external. And just by twisting out this little screw, you can flip it from an external to an internal. And then you can do the same vice versa. And one more time, John, let's look at that replay. All right, meat and potatoes here. The whole reason why you guys came to watch this video, let's get this cylinder rebuilt. Uh, if you do not have a chain vise, I highly recommend it. I not only have one in the shop, but I have one mounted to my truck as well. So this steer cylinder is held together by being bolted in place. There are other steer cylinders that have tie rods. Either way, the ends just kind of press on and we're taking those off. Make sure you're inspecting your rods, boys. Look for any nicks, dings, scratches, anything you can get your fingernail in. All right here, these things are worth their weight in gold. Pretty cheap tool. I think you can get these for you know, 30, 40 bucks. But they're basically blunted uh, pick tools. Uh, they got like a little scoopy shovel in it, end on them. That way you can get underneath seals and not chance dinging them or anything. But uh, yeah, if you don't have these and you do hydraulic cyl cylinders, you should. Oh yeah, and if you slip, you uh, don't really stab yourself as bad. And uh, this little guy right here, this loader, I uh, assume that's what it is. If you know how to use it, uh, comment below because I have no idea. I throw it away. This right here will be your, I believe they call it a silicon uh, piston seal. This is the backup ring. I usually call these quad rings. I see them quite often used for other hydraulic applications. Then go ahead and lube up your new seals with the uh, oil that it's going to ride in. In this case, it's... Uh, ISO 32 and we'll go ahead and slip this quad ring over and I get it up and in that little groove and I know you can just kind of flip these in here but this one's a quad ring and it is easy to roll these on accident so that's why I'm taking a little bit of extra time to make sure it sits down in there squarely and doesn't get rolled So here's another big tip that I tell a lot of my new guys is take off your old seals nicely, set them off to the side, and uh, you'll actually see that that kind of pays off in this uh, example. Um, you never know what some of these seal kits will give you. Sometimes too many parts, sometimes not enough. Uh, they sometimes are universal, or there's an update. Uh, they're not always, always correct. So right here you can see I'm kind of taking this out carefully so that way I can check my orientation. If you're unfamiliar with how a seal comes out, always take it out carefully. Make sure you remember what way it comes out. Uh, this seal right here, the U-cup, uh, as we call it, faces down. U-cup always faces the oil. 
Uh, this upper piece is the wiper and it actually has a steel backer ring. So I have to actually wedge something behind it and then uh, pop it out of here. Uh, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about when the new one goes in. This is exactly why you save your old seals. This is not a seal, this is a backer ring. This goes behind this O-ring. Here's the original O-ring. And it's to fill the space of the groove. And then from here, you'll examine the rest of the parts that came in. I got two different size seals here. I don't need this larger O-ring, so I'll toss that off to the side here. And then I'll compare my new O-ring with the uh, original. Make sure they're the same size, which they're the same size, and make sure you get rid of your old one. And then from here, we'll go ahead and organize out what we have. I got two backer rings, two O-rings, U-cup, and wiper. And then from here, throw away all your old crap. Uh, you don't want to get it confused with your new stuff. So we'll just toss it there in the fuck it bucket. And now let's get to rebuilding our gland ends. So when rebuilding hydraulic cylinders, there's a couple simple things to remember. The O-ring always faces the oil. So right here, I'm sticking the spacer or backer ring on first. Uh, that in this case would be facing away from the oil. That would be more towards the outside. And this next one I'm putting on is the O-ring. That is closer to the tube, which houses the oil. So you can see here, I got the backer and the O-ring and it fills the gap perfectly. And as always, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you wouldn't mind, uh, go ahead and hit that like button, uh, leave me a comment below and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And the next thing to remember about doing hydraulic cylinders is the U-cup always faces the oil. And this seal, there's actually an O-ring that's in the U-cup, uh, but you'll look at the gland end, and I have the outside facing up in this shot. So my U-cup is going down towards the oil or towards the tube, and we'll get it kind of stuck down in there, and you'll kind of hold it up into the groove, and you'll force it down with your fingers. Uh, they do make installer tools. You don't always need them and just kind of pops in there. And then this right here is your wiper and the U-cup for the wiper always faces out towards the dirt. Uh, basically it cleans the rod off uh, as it slides in and out. And if you get yourself in a situation where the seal rolls in there, you can use these blunted tools to kind of force it in the groove. And let me know what you think of the new format, the voiceover narration, or do you like the live commentary instead? Most all of these cylinders have some sort of chamfer to help get the new seals in. You just gotta waggle her in there. And as you can see, it just kind of goes right in and get it centered up there. So what I'm about to show you is fairly minor, but it has more major implications 
there's uh, some dings on the end of that cylinder. And when you try to install seals, if you don't take care of those, they can actually cut the seal as they go on. So I'm using a roll lock a wheel on a die grinder. And this is a red medium wheel. And it's just to kind of buff down the edges so they're nice and smooth. Uh, this part does not go in and out of the wipers, so it's not very important. But we, it is important as far as getting the new gland end and seals over the edge so you don't cut them as you install it. And uh, don't neglect these. This is the boss o-ring fitting and replace these. Every time you take these fittings out or you do any type of hydraulic repair, just replace it. It saves a callback, but don't be that guy that just puts it right back in. Look how hard this thing is. I go to pull it off and it just snaps. Just like that. That thing is old and wore out. Replace it every time. So wheel bearings on the real low speed vehicle, like a forklift, I just run these in tight to seat everything. As you can see, it's all seated and I go to spin it. And it's got a lot of drag and then I'll back it off, leaving just a bit of preload on the bearings. And then uh, I'll slip the cotter key back in. And here we are, uh, all put back together. Just need to get off the blocks and give her a test run and uh, make sure there's no leaks. And we can go ahead and call that fixed-ish. Mm -hmm. 